Now, uh, Sid, um, now when you when you finally do just retire, are you planning on um, on taking it easy? Uh, maybe doing some hunting and fishing, or what? What is your uh, what is your plans for retirement? Are you just uh, not even thinking about that right now? No, Bob, I am thinking about that. I'm gonna. I you know uh, when I was uh, going through wrestling school, I had had a couple part time jobs that I worked to make myself do it through because that could have afford me the, the luxury of being off on Sundays where I could get down to the wrestling school or get up to it at Nashville. And one of the jobs I had where I really was interested in was was this security work, Bob. And I'm right in the middle right now of opening my own private security company up. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, security is something great to get into. So, um, so now you, you're um, right in the middle of doing that. You think that's something you're going to be doing within within a year or so, or? Bob, uh, that's something I'm going to do the rest of my life. Cool. I was just, uh, I'm, I'm, I just got the all the stuff sent to me from the states, Tennessee. I'm going to do it in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi. That's what the region I live in right here. And um, it's like, Bob, you know, this is an opportunity for me in life, Bob, and I don't want to knock the wrestling business, but. This is something I can do in life that I, I'm judged by just hard work that I do. I don't have to be uh, sit vicious. I don't have to kiss anyone's ass. It's just going to be sit. This is what you do. And this is if you're you're. There's no limitations on you as long as all you do is work hard. Yeah. To me, Bob, if I'm in a society like that, to all I have to do is beat you or anyone else by working hard, I'm going to win every time, Bob. Yeah. Well. That's good. I mean, you got a lot of initiative, and uh, I'm glad to see. I mean, a lot, a lot of people like, hey, you know, are looking for you to get back into wrestling, but I think you've, you've gone there, you've been there, you've done that, you showed people what you can do, and you're moving on. That's a good thing, you know. Well, Bob, I was on a conversation yesterday with one of these uh, wrestling uh, site internet girls, and they say, and I don't know who, I don't remember their name, uh, it was like wrestling web stuff or something. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the guy's name. His name was Chris Cash. Um, kind of petition to try to get me to come back, Bob. The thing is, I told him yesterday, well, I'm not interested hard anymore because the main reason is I don't think the business can do for the business. And that's, I want to do, I would like to get a chance to draw big money. And I don't think, um, I don't think it can be done right now. And I don't think I, I can wait around for it to be an opportunity for me to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Now, um, now, what would you say was one of your biggest moments in in the wrestling? Was it was it the Hulk Hogan uh, match you had, or, or um, you know, was it just no. a uh, really? And I go back to the story, probably not mean anything to you, Bob, but the wrestling fans will remember this. The first opportunity I had for a world title shot, that I never thought much about world titles either. But I was told for three months I was going to be the next world champion, and they come to us. What we call is when they come to us with, with the finish of the match. And you see, the finish of the match is you get heat on Sting, you shoot him out to the floor, you send him to the back door at the UIP Civilian Center in Chicago. He'll come back to the ring with a head hung down like someone hitting. You owe him up one, two, three, you're the champ. I said, sure, I don't call question that, you're the boss. Well, that all happens, Bob. When I go roll Sting up, I look down, it's Barry Wyndham. Barry Wyndham had taken off three months. Which he was known to do that all the time, just take off and not know where he was at. He took off and lost 30 or 40 pounds for that one night. So I looked down at three one of them, I'm thinking, what's going on? He says, don't worry about it, just roll me up, kids. So I roll up, one, two, three, he scoots out. The referee gives me the belt. I turn my back, I raise the belt, and it was a one. And I'm figuring in my head that the only thing that can happen is they're going to say the thing at TV the following night of Monday, saying, hey, Sid won this belt by cheating, because that's what we do as bad guys, Bob, we cheat. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I heard this great ovation. I, I looked at the referee. He turns me around. He says, take the stinger splash, one, two, three. The thing about that, Bob, what I'm getting to is that no one knew what that finish was, not even me, to the second it happened to me. Wow. And I, in our business, Bob, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. So I got to experience something that doesn't happen in our business at all. Yeah, that's incredible. I can see that being your, your highlight moment. You know, that must have been a major charge for you. The man, you're talking about, because every night you know exactly what's going to happen. All of a sudden, for three months, we fooled everybody in the whole, the whole industry. Wow, wow. 
Now, um, I really appreciate you, Sid, talking to me. And, um, you know, I'd like to do another interview maybe with you in the future. Maybe, uh, I know you're planning on going to the, um, to the Arnold Expo. Um, do you want to talk any about that or? Um, uh, you know, the thing about that, Bob, I was, you know, we just talked about my beginning of my bodybuilding career. This is going to be probably the, this is going to be, make it all worth it for me, Bob. You know, in bodybuilding, even the bodybuilding has taken a little bit, of course, it, it, even though they've lost some of the, their divisions, they got the beauty pageant division, the fitness division, and stuff like that, which is more appealing to some people's eyes, especially like mine. Um, for me, to, for bodybuilding, the, the, the crazy thing about that, Bob, is that people don't realize it. you train for a whole year for one minute. And it really comes down to five or say one, two, three. You know, your basic mandatory poses. You start off with a, you know, standing there with a, you know, your lat spread. You turn to a um, left bicep, a double tricep, double bicep. Turn around to the right tricep, the lat spread, and pretty much that's it. You train for a whole year for a few mandatory poses, and you hope that you fit, you come, you know, that you place in the top people where you can come down. And even if you don't, Mr. Bob, even win, you still get to go out there for one minute and do your own little pose, your routine that you do. Yeah. That's really what you do. You don't do it for the mandatory. And I'm not definitely doing it for placing and winning. I'm doing it because it's a great hobby to be in. And you really do it for that one minute of your own, own, own self-indulgence, that you, your own little routine that you came up with. So to think about it, Bob, you train for one solid year. For me, I've lost over 40 pounds, and it's all for one minute. Wow, wow. That's a lot. I mean, um, it's. I guess it's the only thing I could see similar is some of these guys that are, you know, um, entering martial arts matches and they train, train, train. They get well, out Bob, there and the, the match is one the, minute. The difference yeah. for those guys, Bob, is not one year. It's a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. That's it's true. a lifetime, and in, in, in amateur wrestling, the collegiate wrestling, is a lifetime for three, three minute rounds. We know in MMA now, it's a lifetime for one minute in that business because sometimes you make a career in one minute or you lose a career in one minute. Yeah.